Hi, it's Ashley from Sweet Dreams Bake Shop, and welcome back to my channel where I make a lot of cake and cookie decorating tutorials, as well as give a lot of baking business tips. So throughout this tutorial, I'm going to be showing you exactly what I'm doing, as well as give you some tips on how I generally like to create character set cookies. Now, because characters, like especially Disney ones, are very recognizable, what I like to do is I like to do my take on the character rather than doing the exact character face. The reason for this is, sure, I could bring out my projector and I could just copy the face directly. And sometimes if a customer asked for that, I would do that specifically. However, I think it's a lot more fun and unique to do your own little take on it because why are people choosing you as their cookie artist? Because they like your style. So it's really important for myself to bring my own style into whatever cookies that I'm creating. So for all the cookies so far, I've just been using pipe and flood consistency. And I go back and forth between which type of consistencies that I like to use, but this particular pipe and flood that I came up with is pretty good. I don't have to shake the cookie at all. I don't have to pop the air bubbles. It pretty much just falls into place. Now, whenever you're doing a wet on wet technique, which basically means that you're taking two consistencies that are exactly the same, but they differ in color. So you're creating a type of pattern, usually when you use the wet on wet technique. Now, sometimes it can be a little risky when you're doing black and white. To prevent bleeds, I generally like to make sure I'm dehydrating my layers in between. And if you aren't quite sure what I'm talking about, go ahead and check out that video on the right hand corner where I explain it a little bit better. Now, I wanna talk about the different designs that I'm doing. So this is something I very, very typically do whenever I'm asked to do a character set and there is no formal instructions. So I like to do the birthday number and I generally find when I'm doing characters, it's for a birthday, usually a children's birthday. And then I like to take patterns from that particular movie or wherever the character is from and I like to incorporate it on more generic shapes, like this cupcake for example. I should also mention that to make things easier on myself, I really like to limit the number of colors. So I was just asked to do a Toy Story theme and I was told that Jesse is their favorite character. So I decided to go Jesse pretty much all the way. That way I really didn't have to do too, too many colors because with movies, as we know, there could be a number of colors that might be used. And I really like to reduce that, especially when there's only 24 cookies, which is my general minimum. Now the real trick to creating cookie designs is just to make sure that you have everything planned out in your head about which layer you're going to do first. So you'll notice that because I don't want to do a dam that's thicker and then fill it in, which is the way that I used to do cookies, I want everything to kind of be a little bit more homogenous in the sense that there's no big lines that pop out, it just has that little bit of differentiation. And the way that you create that without having to make different icing consistencies is again, dehydrating those layers in between before adding adding on another color. Notice that when I'm adding on this hat here, the face portion is fully dry. I do wanna go back and talk about that face portion just really quickly here. You'll notice that the face is really messy and doesn't have those tight lines like the rest of my icing. The reason is because I didn't place the icing in a piping bag because I only needed just that tiny little bit of color. You may have seen me spoon it on with a chopstick earlier in the video. This is okay because I am going to be covering up those imperfections, but in general, I definitely, definitely think you should be using a piping bag when you're putting this on. I used to actually take a spoon and kind of put things where they needed to be because I had seen that done once on a YouTube video actually years and years ago. And I found that when I did it that way and tried to spread things around, it really created a lot of air bubbles. So if you have a lot of issues with air bubbles, that could be part of the reason. I also find that I actually don't have to use my cookie scribe that much anymore because my piping icing is a much better consistency. So I really don't have to play around with it at all. And I don't get air bubbles. By the way, my sugar cookie recipe as well as my royal icing recipe is down in the description box below. It's very, very straightforward. However, you really want to make sure that when you're making your royal icing recipe that you whip it up. I used to not whip my icings enough and I used to not re-whip. So if you go away for a long duration of time and you've covered up that icing, it does need to be re-whipped or else I find it becomes way too thin. 
So when I'm doing cutesy characters like this, what I like to do is I like to take just a regular gingerbread cutter and then I find different cookie cutters that I have to add on the accessories. So in this case, it really was just a cowboy hat that we're adding on. So I use the gingerbread cutter first and then I use the cowboy hat next and then I just place them really, really close together on the baking sheet. I didn't even bind it together or have to do anything like that. It just bakes into one another and I find it doesn't wreck the integrity of the cookie at all. It's just as strong as if I were to cut it out with one solid cutter. Now what I'm doing is I'm really simplifying all of the shapes that I see on the Jessie character. So of course she's going to be a lot more shapely as she is a 3D character and we're really just creating something that is 2D. So I'm just using kind of block formations and I'm really simplifying the actual character. And I often look at different drawings that have been done by other people or even by the Disney company itself, especially when they're creating things like coloring books, they often will kind of pare down on the detailing. And so I take a cue from that as well. Now I'm taking some piping consistency, which is a lot thicker, but notice that when I get to those thickened parts, it actually still kind of blends into one another. And this happens for two reasons. One of the reasons is, of course, the consistency of icing, and that's probably one of the most important things. And to thicken this up, I add a little bit of icing sugar and also meringue powder. If you just add icing sugar, it will get clumpy and lumpy and way too hard. So you do need that extra meringue powder as well. The other thing that I do is I just squeeze that piping bag a little bit harder to get those thickened portions. Now this is probably part of the design that I really faked the most. The reason being is I couldn't actually get a clear picture of what was going on with this squiggly pattern that's on all of the yellow parts of Jessie's outfit. So I kind of just tried to wing it. Now there's a lot of thinking that goes into why I choose the designs and why I choose the colors I choose. So I knew that I'd be able to double up on that thick red piping on the hair, on the writing, on all of those detailings. So that's why I chose to have that kind of cloud with the Natalie on there because I knew I would be using the same piping consistency on here for the hair as well. So I often do think about those things when I'm creating sets, trying to reduce the number of colors and the different consistencies that I'm using as well. Now to create this braid, you'll notice I'm just kind of crisscrossing things over and I am also going to put on a little bow there too. So I am leaving a little bit of a gap there and I'm creating all of those little details mimicking those hearts that I did creating the same kind of squiggly pattern but again it's kind of a guess on here as well not doing it the exact same since I don't have the exact same amount of room Whenever I am piping sugar cookies, I always use one tip size and one tip size only, and that is a number two tip. I like it because it's thin enough to get those nice details in there, but it's not too thin where things are going to get clogged. I find the number three too thick, and I find a number one way too small. But if you have been here for a while, you know that actually my number one pick is a tipless bag. I just find you can get so much done with it. You're not going to run into clogs because if you do, you can easily squeeze it out. But my supplier has run out and I haven't seen it for quite some time now. So hoping to find another supplier that I will like for tipless bags. What I'm doing here is I'm incorporating different things onto that three and I'm adding in all of those little final details. Somebody asked me in a previous video, I notice sometimes you go to the next day and then you'll finish up the detailing and that is perfectly fine to do. You're not going to get a super dried out cookie from that. And honestly, realistically, when you're doing cookies that are in the hundreds, you are going to have to leave those cookies out for a while and a few days really shouldn't wreck the integrity of your cookies, especially if you use my classic sugar cookie recipe. I added on her little blush with just a bit of petal dust and now I'm using a little bit of edible food gel mixed with some vodka. The reason that we add that vodka in is just so that it dries a lot faster. If you don't have any on hand, it's not going to be detrimental. It'll just take a little while longer for that edible food gel to be really, really nice and smooth and not sticky to the touch. Another question I get asked a lot is how do I store the cookies when they're drying and I don't want to work on them right that second, but I want to work on them the next day. I honestly just leave them out on their cookie trays in room temperature. Don't want to box them up because then I find that sometimes the cookie can over soften when I do that and it'll kind of break apart on me. The other thing is, is the icing never really seems to dry when I cover them up before everything is fully dry. If I were going to be a cookie or full time and I had the space, definitely a huge cookie rack where you can store your iced cookies is probably the best way to go. 
I had so much fun with this set and I think this is something that I would really want customers to know that in general if you give the creative freedom to somebody you're probably going to end up with a product that you love even more than what you could have imagined. Now let's get into the pricing of these cookies and it's always a little bit more complicated when I'm trying to price cookie sets because there is going to be a range. So these would range in $3.50 to $10 per cookie. So the $3.50 range ones would be the number threes which are pretty small but they are still very personalized so that's why they still kind of have a higher price. And then of course Jessie would be $10 because she is actually quite a large cookie. And of course, pricing is different all over the world and colors and things like that also play into the pricing of this. But just to give you a little bit of a guideline, for example, I saw a sugar cookie that was not personalized. It was just a regular decorated sugar cookie for $4 in a storefront the other day. Now let's get into our subscriber submission of the day and I am in love with this cake. There's something just so fresh, modern, and it looks delicious, does it not? So make sure that you go and follow my subscriber on Instagram, drop them a like, drop them a comment, and of course, if you want to be featured in my next video, then make sure to follow me on Instagram at SD Bake Shop and be sure to tag me or message me any of the photos that you want possibly featured on this channel to a bunch of dessert enthusiasts. Thanks so much for watching, guys. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe so you can be part of the Sweetie Fam. Right now, I'm uploading weekly, so make sure you hit that notification bell so you know when I upload. Also, be sure to comment, request, or ask a question. I love hearing from you guys. Bye!